Come up button now to click the photo. <laughs> And that sound, I think people say, use the shutter button to turn your volume up. <laughs> so in addition to this, we've added optional grid lines. So you can use the rule of thirds to compose your photo or line it up. You can now pinch to zoom right within the camera. And if you hold your finger over part of the scene now, we'll set the auto exposure and auto focus lock and you can even move it around, you know, stick to that. Now, this is a really advanced feature, and we've brought it to the iPhone, and we've made it really easy for everyone to use. Now, next, once you've taken your great photos, you can now edit them right on your iPhone. And your iPad. You can do things like crop and rotate, red eye reduction, so if you've taken the photo at left where the flash has caused a red eye, you can automatically remove that red eye right on your iPhone or iPad. And we even brought over the one-click enhance that we uh, pioneered in iPhoto on the Mac and have brought that to iOS. So you can see when you applied one tap enhance to the right, how the color tones look so much nicer, how it pulls detail out of shadow. It's really nice. So some great photo editing features and really nice camera enhancements. <laughs> Next is Mail. Now, Mail is one of the most used applications on both the iPhone, iPod, and iPod Touch, or iPad and iPod Touch. And we're making it even better in iOS 5. We're adding rich text formatting, so you can set things as bold, italic, and underline. You can control the indentation. So if you're forwarding something, you can unindent it or further indent it. You can now drag the addresses between 2CC and BCC. <laughs> you don't have to retype them again. We've added support for flagging, so you can flag and unflag. Now this next one has been an incredibly popular request. In addition to searching from, to, and subject, you can search the entire contents of all your messages, both the messages on your phone and all the messages back on the mail server. So search the entire contents of your messages. For the iPad, we added a really nice swipe to inbox gesture. So it makes it really nice to use this in portraits. So you can swipe it on, tap on something, swipe it off. And with every release of iOS 5, or iOS, we continue to add more support for our enterprise customers. And one example of that in iOS 5 is we've added support for S-MIME. So now, I think we've done a really nice job of this. So now if you have the certificate of someone else, you automatically get this lock icon right in the addressing field to, to show you this will be encrypted when sent to the other person. And let me just go ahead and give you a demo of a few of these features now. All right. So first, I can just show you a simple gesture. I can just pull on the inbox right from there. So anywhere you are when you're in portrait, just pull it on. You'll have to go hunt up and find the right button for it. You can see we have flagging here, so I can tap on that flagged message. Oh, one other feature we've added is a built-in dictionary throughout the OS as a service now. So before, we had a dictionary in the iBooks app. But we now have brought that to the entire OS so all apps from the App Store can use it. So here, if I just press down, let's say, on Leachies, I don't know what that is, let's say, uh, I get a define in addition to copy. Tap define. There it is, built-in dictionary. It's great. <laughs> if I, say, respond to this message, again, I can grab one of these addresses and now just drag it to BCC drag to two, and rearrange it. It's really nice and easy. Now, there's one more feature I want to show you, and it's actually a system-wide feature having to do with the keyboard. When we released the original iPhone, we revolutionized the way people would type on multi-touch displays. And we keep on challenging ourselves to make that even better. Well, we have a new variant of the keyboard in iOS 5 for the iPad, which we think people who like to type with their thumbs while holding it 
are really going to like. In the bottom right, you see the keyboard button, and now it has some grab handles. If I just take those and drag it up, it splits it into two. And so what it does is it just moves the keys closer to your thumbs on the side. So you can, you can put it wherever you want. It's really nice, and it's persistent for every app in the system. It just stays where you put it. If you want to put it back down, just press and hold. If you dock and merge, it goes back down to the bottom. So even a split keyboard. And that's mail. Number eight. PC free. <laughs> so we've built these incredible devices, the iPhone and the iPad, and people get them home, they open up their box, and they see this. Uh -huh. I say, well, what? You know, we're living in a post-PC world. In fact, especially with the iPad, we're ushering in the post-PC world. And we have a lot of customers coming to us and saying, I want to buy an iPad as my only device. I don't own a computer. I want to buy an, an iPhone as my only device, my only actually internet access for where I live will be my iPhone. We know we're selling into a lot of places where the households just don't have computers. And they want to buy an iOS device as their only device, and that's exactly what we're going to support in iOS 5. Now, when you take your iPhone out of the box, instead of seeing this, you're going to see this. You can now set up and activate your device right on the device, and you are ready to go. It's that easy. And of course, there's some other things we had to do to make this possible. Software updates are now over the air. So you no longer need to go and plug into a computer just to update your software. And of course, they're now Delta updates. So instead of downloading the entire OS, you just download what's changed. Now, the next thing we did is we, we looked at all of the apps on the iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, and asked ourselves, what are the reasons that people go back to a computer today? And let's add that functionality right to iOS. So for instance, you used to have to go back to a computer to create calendars or delete calendars. You can now create and delete calendars right from iOS. You saw. For photos, we've added really significant editing functionality in there. So you can crop, rotate, one tap enhance, red eye reduction right from within your iOS device. And even in mail now, you can create mailboxes and delete mailboxes right from iOS. So we looked at all of the apps on the iPhone and the iPad, added that functionality. So now, if you want to cut the cord, you can. Next is Game Center. iOS is the most popular gaming platform on the planet. There are more than 100,000 game and entertainment titles in the App Store. And so about nine months ago, we launched Game Center. And we did it to make it even easier for people to find players to play games against, and also to make it easy for you to compare how you're doing against your friends. Well, in just nine months, we have 50 million Game Center users. Now, to put that into perspective, Xbox Live has been around for about eight years, and they have around 30 million users. So Game Center is very popular, and we're making it even better in iOS 5. To make it more fun and social, we're adding photos, so you can see photos of your friends, change your photos, you can now compare yourself against your friends using achievement points per game. You can see friends of friends, 
as well. You also will get recommended friends that might be great people to play some of the games that you like. We've also added game recommendations. So there might be some really great games out there, maybe they're new, that you don't know about, and we'll help you discover those. Once you've discovered a game you like, you can purchase and download it directly from Game Center. Now this is great both for our customers and for our developers. Another thing we've done for our developers is we've added support for turn-based games right into the OS. There are some great turn-based games out there like Scrabble, but the developer had to do all the work for that. And now that's supported right out of the box in iOS 5. So some really nice enhancements to Game Center. Next is iMessage. Now, I believe we have the best messaging client out there on the iPhone. It works tremendously well to send text messages, send photos, send videos. And our customers love it, our iPhone customers. But what about our iPad customers and our iPod Touch customers? They've been asking us for a messaging solution. And so in iOS 5, we are launching a new messaging service between all iOS 5 customers. And we call it iMessage. So iMessage supports the iPhone, the iPad, and the iPod Touch. It does everything you've come to expect from our messaging app on the iPhone. So you can send text messages, photos, videos, send contacts, do group messaging, everything you've come to expect. And we've added some really nice new features. Things like delivery receipts. So you can see if it's been delivered to the other person's device. Optional read receipts, so you can see if it's been read. This is one of my favorite, typing indication. So you can tell now if someone starts typing and they're responding to you, you know you're about to get that message. iMessages are pushed to all your devices. So if you start a conversation on your iPad and later pick up your iPhone, you can pick up right where you left off with all the context of that conversation to date. It is supported over both 3G and Wi-Fi, and everything is sent encrypted over the, wear, over the, over the air. And I'd like to just give you a demo of iMessage now. To do so, i also like to invite up Jaws, Vice President of Product Marketing, to help me. Hey, Jaws. Hey, Scott. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. If you don't mind, I'm going to play a game, though. Uh, playing a game, OK. Try not to bother me, OK? Uh, product marketing. Uh, so he's on the, his, the iPhone on the left. I'm on my iPad on the right-hand side. I'm going to go ahead and launch messages here. So here I have a conversation going with Jaws. Normally, we don't stand next to each other when having these conversations. It's the most I've talked to you all week. Let's grab lunch after the show. Uh, no. OK, so when I send this to him, you'll notice as he plays the game, it comes in right at the top. And he can keep on playing the game, so it's not interrupting him I'm as he a, does his lovely job playing this I'm game. I'm on a roll. Don't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> but at any time, he can get right back to that message. Uh-oh. At any time. Uh, I think this might be a good time. At any time, time you can. <laughs> <laughs> it's so addicting. <laughs> <laughs> Just by pulling down, tapping no. on that, takes him right to uh, this. Now, as he starts typing, See on my side where there's the three dots in the balloon? That lets me know he's currently responding. Well, I'll check maybe some other messages while he's doing so. <laughs> so then when he sends the message, you see where it sends? He gets a little delivered. It already knows it's been delivered right to my device. And when I tap on his message, it sends a read receipt saying, read, 11.15 AM. He knows I've read it. So read receipts, great. We can also send uh, high quality photos and videos. Let me go ahead and choose a photo here. All right, maybe we can have a picnic by the bridge, Jaws. Oh, that's so sweet. 
uh, send him a little picture again. You can tell from the dots on his side that I'm composing it right now. Send it off. 